Governor Evers hit the road Friday morning to sell his budget blueprint around the state. He touted what he calls a people's budget on a stop at an elementary school in Racine. Welcome back to Upfront. I'm Adrian Patterson. The governor also wants to make changes in corrections. He wants to hire more prison guards and pay them more. He'd also indefinitely delay closure of the troubled Lincoln Hills School for Youth in Irma. And he wants to up the age for charging juveniles as adults from 17 to 18 for most crimes. So we're getting the Democrats' view of the Democratic governor's budget. We're here with Senator LaTanya Johnson of Milwaukee, who also sits on joint finance. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So a big night when Governor Evers announced the budget. But the Republicans have control. So as a Democrat, what is your goal here? I think as a Democrat, our goal is compromise. And I believe that that was a piece that was missing before when Republicans controlled everything. There was no need to compromise. But now with Governor Evers at the helm, it forces us all to compromise and to try to just put partisanship aside and focus on the people. And I think with his budget announcement yesterday, that was what we heard. We heard his ploy to concentrate on the people. And the Republicans would say that this is dash drastic, that this is a far left budget, that it's really not a compromise. So how are you specifically going to compromise with this budget? I don't see it as a far left budget. I think that what we saw last night is something that we all know. We have constituents that come into the Capitol to talk to us about what their community lacks, such as broadband, the need to do more for mental health in our community. So this was something that we've heard over and over from the people. And, you know, before the conversation was always, well, we would love to address these issues, but where's the money coming from? I believe that, you know, our last administration focused more on business, and this administration is focusing more on people. Do you think Wisconsin can afford this $83 billion budget? I do. I do. I believe that Governor Evers has done an excellent job in laying out how this would be paid for. And it's worthwhile to make sure that everyone in Wisconsin has a good quality of life, which is what, what they all deserve. What is the one thing that you will really fight Republicans for in this budget? What is the one thing you want to see go through? The mental health piece, that's huge. And not only do we see the mental health issues being huge in the community, we also see that being a huge issue in so many of our prisons. Take Lincoln Hills, for example, where 80% of the female inmates have diagnosable mental health issues. Um, I believe that ranges between 60 and 65 percent of the boys. I think that says something, that we can't continue to use our criminal justice system to deal with our mentally ill, that we have to put those dollars out there ahead of time to make sure that those issues are addressed and those individuals don't fall through the cracks and end up in our criminal justice system. And the governor wants to push back closing Lincoln Hills. What do you think about that? So the governor wants to push back closing mental, I mean, Lincoln Hills until the other facility is ready. That's just a precautionary way to make sure that when we close Lincoln Hills, that the new facility is up and ready to go. We don't want to set a date for the closure and then not be prepared to accommodate those youth that are coming in. Um, we want to make sure that we get this right. We've seen from Lincoln Hills how juvenile justice can be done right wrong. And we want to make sure that when we make these investments, that they're lasting investments and that we're doing it the right way. And critics are calling this place abusive, that it's an emergency and it needs to be shut down now. Exactly. And if we had our facilities up and ready to go, Lincoln Hills would be shut down immediately. But the reality is that we haven't even decided on a location yet as to where that would be housed here in Milwaukee. We have to listen to the neighbors in those communities, too, and the business owners, and make sure that it's a right fit wherever it goes, to make sure that, you know, the families can visit, that these places are on bus lines and that the community are welcoming these institutions into their community, because that's key. We want to make sure that the sites that are being built are therapeutic, and that's what Lincoln Hills is missing currently. I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about what happened with Colin Kaepernick. I know that you wanted to put him on a resolution celebrating and honoring Black History Month, but the Republicans 
said no. So that didn't happen. He was out. Are there any lingering feelings about that for you? Of course, there are always going to be ling lingering feelings when it comes to a debate like that. It wasn't just about Colin Kaepernick. It was about giving African Americans in that building the opportunity to recognize whoever they choose to recognize during Black History Month and to be told that the individual that we chose, an individual who's from Wisconsin, is too controversial, is a slap in the face. Does it change the way you see some of your Republican colleagues now? I don't think that it changes the way that I see my colleagues, but it definitely gives you pause for concern. We all know that we're going to have to work together for the good of the state, and so I don't think that that's going to prevent us from doing our jobs because we're all professional. But it is something that definitely needs to be looked at. Okay, thank you. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Next on Upfront TV journalist and matter of fact host Soledad O'Brien. She'll tell me why she thinks journalism is crumbling.